A client recently asked me how to set the Heading 1 style to look like this. What's challenging about this uh, layout is that we have the automatic number, Roman numeral in this case, it's centered above the heading, but the heading itself is not only left aligned, it's also indented. So how can we make that happen? I'm going to show you how to do it first with the Heading 1 style just in native Word, and then I'll show you how you could do it a little more easily with our Quick Numbers tool, um, though either way requires some um, style modification on your part. So first, with the Heading 1 style, I'm going to jump into a blank document here, and we'll set it up in here. So. The first thing you want to do is create your list template style, and one way to do that on the home ribbon is to go to the multi-level list and tell it you want to create a new list style. Doing this helps you uh, have a stable outline. And I'll just name this headings. Now what I want to do here is go to format numbering, get in here. So here we have our nine levels, and I want these to be linked to the heading styles. Over here, note the more and less button. With more turned on, we can link to styles. So I'm going to want the heading one style linked to level one of the outline, heading two linked to level two, and so on. And by the way, notice when I pick these, I'm clicking. I'm not coming in here and starting to type the style name. That will feel like it works, but I have discovered through trial and error that that, when you type in here and then pick the style name, something weird happens where it keeps breaking and getting disconnected. So. I always just pick them like this now. Now I would, in real life, go through all of them, but I'm not going to waste my time. I would do all nine levels, though, linking to the heading styles. But right now, all I really care about is level one. So level one, we wanted a Roman numeral followed by a period, and we wanted that centered above the text. So here's the style of number, and here's where, what it's going to look like. So I want a Roman numeral, not the Arabic. And then I'm going to click in here and just backspace to get rid of that close parentheses and put a period. That's what I want it to look like. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Down here we have the number alignment and where it is aligned. The number itself I want centered. Now, choosing center here does not put it in the center of the page. What it means is that as this number gets wider, you know, like think of a Roman numeral three as three eyes. Um, that will center over whatever spot I tell it to align at. And where I want this aligned is in the center of the page. So if I have one inch margins, I have six and a half inches of typing space on an eight and a half wide piece of paper. So half of 6.5 is 3.25. And I'm very proud to announce I did that math in my head. Um, a rare moment for me. So I want to tell the number to be centered and aligned at 3.25 inches. That will put the Roman numeral smack dab in the middle of the page. Then the text itself, I want to be indented, let's say half an inch, 0.5. And I'm good here. Oh, follow number width. Since the number is going to be above the text, I don't need to follow it with a tab or space or anything. It's just going to be right above it. Now what I really want after the number is a line break, but that's not a choice in Microsoft Word. I'm going to have to type that in, shift, enter. To, um, and I'll show you when I'm done with this. Okay, so I've got this. And then I would go through and do my other headings however I want them, but we'll just worry about heading one right now. It's going to look like this. Let me put a little bit of text in here. This is my heading. OK, I paused and typed some text. So this is how it looks naturally. But what we need to do when we're typing and using this is right at the very beginning of the paragraph, Shift-Enter on the keyboard. 
is a line break. And what that does is that pushes the text down to the next line, but it does not start a new paragraph. I'm going to turn show hide on so you can see I get this, not a hard return. What a lot of people will do is not knowing about shift enter, they'll just press enter. And then all kinds of bad things happen, like their number disappears, or somehow they manage to keep the number, but they end up with two separate paragraphs. Now here you see I get a second number when I do that. They maybe somehow make it look the way they want, but um, it's two separate paragraphs. And if you run a table of contents, it's not going to go in as one heading. It'll go in as separate entries. The number would be one entry, the text would be another. Now I'm assuming they probably want a space between the Roman numeral and the line. So I'm gonna do another shift enter on the keyboard just to make that look, just to give that some more space. And I'm gonna turn uh, show hide off. So notice that I did everything for the number where the number starts on the page, it's centered below 3.25, and then the text itself is starting in half an inch. It, I did all of that through the list number style. And because I created a list number style, if I go to my multi-level and I look down here, it's right here under list styles, and I can right click it and choose modify. So this just gives you more stability. In there I did format, oops, not font, format numbering, and that's where I was able to set the things I showed you. Oh, and look, it lost its link to heading one. I don't know if that's because I showed typing in there. Um, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now we, you can see what heading one looks like. So I did the number and any left indents and number indents through the multi-level list styles down here. The style itself, the way the text that you're typing looks, and if that is left aligned or centered or right aligned, that is just done through the style. So this happens to be the heading one style and I've got it up here in my styles uh, gallery on the home ribbon. I'm gonna right click that to modify it and I'll just make this look the way I really wanted. Let's say I wanted it bold, underlined, uh, not blue. Maybe I wanted all caps, so I don't see anything for that. So I'll say format, font, all caps. I could change the size. Oh, I don't want this. I want this to be the same size as the rest of my text, which, which is 12 points. Okay. And I'm happy. Oh. One thing I would also do for a style like this is I would go into format paragraph line and page breaks and make sure that keep with next is turned on. Now it is because this is the heading one style, but if it wasn't, I would check this. That way I never have to worry about the page breaking between my heading and whatever text is below it. And then any line spacing, paragraph spacing that I wanted, I would set up in here. And I would probably want 12 point space after, not before. Do not mess with any of the left indents or the special indent through format paragraph when you're dealing with automatic numbers. That you always do through the numbering list style that I showed you in the beginning. If you come in here and start making changes to those, it will probably break your outline and things start jumping all over the place and going haywire. Okay, there it is, I'm happy. Now, I said I'd show how to do it with our tool. Oh, let me just show you how to use it for a minute here. So we've got it set up. Let me just get rid of this entirely and I'll put the normal style on some text, throw some text in here. Okay, um, if I wanted to come along and type a heading right here, I could tell it heading one, which I've got here that I can click, shift enter on the keyboard, and then type whatever my heading is. If the text already exists, I let's say this whole paragraph here, let me make this a little bit smaller. Let's say this paragraph right here where my cursor is should also be heading one. I can click anywhere in the paragraph and then apply the heading one style by clicking it or on your keyboard, Control Alt one applies the heading one style. Now I still, because this is native word, 
and I can't put a line break after a number automatically, I still have to come to the beginning and type shift enter once or twice, depending on how I want it. And there we go. All right, that was with native word. Now, let me get rid of that. And let's do it using our tool. And I'll show you just quickly how uh, it would work with the quick numbers tool. So quick numbers will set up outlines for you, make life much easier, and it will help you modify the outlines without having to know what you can do through the style, what you do through the number, where to go, all that stuff. But there are some things that we're doing in this that it doesn't do. So um, I'll show you. So first thing you would do is choose an outline. And you basically just want to find something that's closest to what you want. Uh, in this case, I don't know. I'll just use this appellate pleading one. Um, okay. So I'm picking this one. Well, let me see. Yeah, I'll just pick a pellet pleading. Don't need to make this any harder than necessary. Okay, so I chose it, I say okay. Now what the computer has done, what the software did, is it went and created all the styles for that outline. So they all exist in the document now. It also, if you go to your multi-level lists and look, created a list style that you can modify. So we can, Let's put it on this top paragraph. So under quick numbers, I could tell it level one or just press alt one on my keyboard. Now this is double space by design, uh, but maybe I don't want that. And maybe I want it underlined and you know I wanted it left aligned, etc. So a lot of these changes I can just make through quick numbers. And that would be uh, for this level, I want it to be underlined and I want to make sure that I have keep lines together and keep with next on so that that doesn't ever break in the middle of the heading that's keep lines together or between the heading and the next paragraph that's keep with next I also want this single space so that I can do for all levels of the outline. I could say I want them to be single spaced. And that looks good. Now it's centered though, and I want it left aligned. And so that is this level left aligned. Okay. Except that I wanted it indented. So this level, let's increase, oh, indents, sorry. Indents, let's increase the left indent, and this goes a half an inch at a time, so that's what I want. And then I just wanted this number centered in the right place. I also want it followed with line breaks. So that I can do the line breaks with the tool still. I can go to number, and there's no text before. I've got the number followed by a period. This is already the way I wanted, but if it wasn't, I could just fix that up in here but I want it followed with two line feeds. It was followed with one. Now this is where the macro can do something for you that Word on its own can't do, and that is put the line feeds in. What I don't have set up in here, only because no one's ever asked for it before, is the ability to center align the number, which I could add to this, and the ability to pick the position where the number starts. So that I'll have to do natively through Microsoft Word's features. To change the left indent and where this is positioned, I want to go into the list style itself. So on the home ribbon, go to the multi-level list drop down is one way to get there and find the right one. As I rest my mouse over this, I now have two in this document. I want to pick the one that I'm using, right click, then choose modify. And then format numbering. And what I wanted to do in here is tell this that the number itself is center aligned and it's aligned at 3.25 inches, which is halfway between the two margins. The text is already indented at 0.5 from the macro. Follow number with nothing is what this will say because that's how it's set up in Word. 
but when we apply it using the numbering tool, let me turn show height on so you can see what happens. And let's say right here I wanted to add another level one heading. When I go to quick numbers and press Alt-1 on my keyboard or click the one for level one, it puts the number in and then it types the two line breaks in for me so I don't have to do that. Then I can just type my heading. Or if the text already exists, just like before, I can click anywhere in the paragraph, apply the heading, and I've got it.